Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to do a fall TBR video because I just have so many books on my fall TBR that I want to talk about. Oh my gosh, I just saw another one I needed to get. Whew, okay. <laughs> I have a whole stack and more that I have on Kindle Unlimited and don't have with me currently. So this will be really fun. I hope this doesn't turn into th that long of a video. Also, it is a very cozy fall day today. I just got this little sweater at Target yesterday. So I put that on and it's raining outside. So it's the perfect weather to talk about books, to read books. So I'm very excited. I have mainly fantasy books, even though like I'm still kind of dabbling in it, but I have so many good books that like a lot of people I watch on YouTube have recommended. So I'm really excited to read all of these books. First book I have is actually a romance though. So I read The X-Hex last October and I absolutely love this book. I'd say it's probably a five stars just because I think about it all the time, even though I did rate it a four out of five. So I picked up up the kiss curse this year and i'm so excited to read it like these books are so like atmospheric they make you feel like you're in halloween town or something and that's exactly the vibes that i want all year round but especially in the fall time i actually have no idea what this book is about but i like grabbed it as soon as i could i actually found this at books a million for it was like five dollars or something you know how they have like i don't know what that's called like the bargain section i guess so yeah i got this for five dollars it's like a little creased up but it's pretty good condition and you can't beat it when it's basically more than 50% off. So I think this follows her cousin from the first book, the girl's cousin, and somebody else, Wells, the guys. Maybe it's like the sister and the cut. I don't know, but I'm excited about it. All I know is that they are witches and that it's a love story. So fantasy that everybody and their mother has read, but not me, Akatar. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get to this because I recently started a series that I will talk about, but it's a long one with big books as well. I'm like, I don't know. I need to finish some series before I start more, but I've been dying to read this. I really have. Like, I'm very excited for when I get the chance to. It's just a matter of when that will be, but I know it's great for the fall because, of course, it's a fantasy, and I've just heard a lot of people say that. And this one follows Feyre, and she kills a wolf in the woods and things happen. So I'm not very sure what exactly Akatar is. But I just know it's going to be amazing. And I know I'm going to love it. It's just a matter of when to get into this big series. That's the issue that I'm having. So because I've literally had this on my TBR for like a year or so now. Like physical TBR. It's just intimidating I guess. Sarah J Mass is intimidating. Eventually I will read it. And hopefully in the fall time. This is also in no particular order. I'm just grabbed a big stack from my bookshelf. I'm just going for that so we have harry potter i actually did read this book this is my first time reading harry potter and i really loved it like i think this fantasy book is so good and anybody that is you know into reading maybe had started kind of recently like myself would definitely like harry potter because it's simple to understand but so entertaining and so well thought out there's so many different like plot twists and stuff and even though i have seen the movies like i still very much enjoyed this and and didn't remember enough to where this felt like boring because I already knew what was gonna happen like I was still like on the edge of my seat and very much enjoyed this so I can't wait to read the rest of the series this fall and then we have a good girl's guide to murder so I actually did read this book and I read the second book good girl bad blood but I need to read the third book which is as good as dead I recently bought it I will be reading that soon but yeah I am excited to get back into these characters and Pip's story. These books are just so fun. I read this book when I had just started reading and I feel like this was one of the books that I had read the fastest when I started reading. Sorry, my dog is knocking the camera. Yeah, I hope that I haven't forgotten too much of what happened in the first two books, but I think that even if I did, it's gonna be a new story hopefully, just with the same characters. I'm excited to read that soon. I also have it on my Kindle, so that's always a plus. And then we have Good Omen 
Romans by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I've heard really good things about this. I saw it at Barnes & Noble and I got my like buy one get one 50% off. I was like this is perfect because I've heard good things about it and it seems like a good time to read it in the fall time because it's like about an angel and a devil and the rapture is coming but it's like a comedy and these two authors like took turns writing chapters and I don't know it just sounds interesting. It sounds like it'd be funny and it's also a TV series now. That could be cool to watch it after I read this. Then a more spooky serious book that I have is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I've heard mixed reviews about this. Like I've heard people say that they really enjoy it but the just like the feeling it gives them is kind of kind of sad and spooky and grim. I don't know. I have this book. I've had this book for a little while now. It seems like the perfect time to read it. I know it's about this girl who her daughter goes missing and then fast forward years later and she is dating this man. His daughter looks just like like her daughter. It's funny because now that I'm thinking about it, like I don't really know exactly what this is about, but in my head I feel like I know because I've heard about it so much. I hope it has plot twists and is giving me spooky vibes without making me sad. So we'll see. Another romance that I have is Love and Other Words. I know this is a very popular <laughs> book and I think maybe that's a little bit why I've been putting it off for so long because I've had this book for a little while now, but I've just put it off because just when it gets like hyped to a certain level that I'm like scared to pick it up because what if I don't like it and what if it doesn't live up to the expectations that everybody has kind of set for it but I know I need to read it so hopefully this fall I can read it because it seems like it'd be a cozy fall romance book to read and I know it follows Elliot and Macy and it's like a friends to lovers second chance romance so I know I'm gonna enjoy this when I read it it's just a matter of when I'm reading it because <laughs> I feel like once people talk about like new books that are, you know exciting that they've read recently then I'm like I want to read those now so then the ones that I've had for a long time get pushed to the back and I know that shouldn't be the way it is because I have so many books on my TBR also I want to read what makes me happy and what is the most entertaining and fulfilling so <laughs> another book that I have have I said that every time another book next book is another romance type of book and it's The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Poston. I know that she wrote Dead Romantics and I saw that book a lot last October, last fall and I was really interested in reading that but I didn't get around to it but I have heard so many good things especially about this book and just her writing in general. Everybody that I've seen has really enjoyed this if not rated it a five stars so I'm excited to pick this up. The, the premise is a little different from stuff I read to be honest. When people describe it, it seems a little confusing. So I hope when I read this, it won't be confusing. But I think it's about this girl, Clementine, and she's kind of like having to figure out like how her life is. So she moves into this New York City apartment. And once she moves in, she realizes that she has a roommate, this man that lives in there, but he lives seven years in the past and she's seven years in his future. Apparently it's giving really good fall vibes set in New York City. How could it get Get much better than that. I think I like books that are like there's romance but you can tell that there's like a lot more to the story than just a romance. Like in general I don't think I like romance very much just on its own because it normally follows the same plot line. You know they're gonna end up together so it's not as exciting as like character building and figuring out you know how somebody is going to pick up their life and figure things out on their own. Stuff like that. So I, I know I'm gonna really enjoy this book. The Seven Year Slip. Okay I think we're getting into our fantasy reads right now. I got a good deal on this book as well from Books A Million, one for my enemy, and I just love, like I was so excited that I got a good deal on this book because it's a hardcover book and it's got these beautiful illustrations in it. I've also heard good things about it and it sounds really interesting so I've been wanting to read it, but it's also set in New York City and they're, I think there's like two rival families and they're both vampires maybe? I guess so because there's blood and there's magic happening and I think it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling of some sort. That's what I know about this one. I'm excited to read it and I've never read an Olive e. Blake book before. I have kind of been a little scared because it seems like she has very like kind of advanced writing in a way. Poetic maybe. I don't know. I haven't read anything but it seemed like it was a little maybe a little bit smarter than my level. <laughs> Quick intermission. <laughs> 
Then we have Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. It says, no God, no creature, no war can come between them. So excited about this. It's also very short, which is making me more motivated to read it in general. I've just heard really good things about this. Honestly, the premise is not that exciting to me if I hadn't heard so many good reviews about this book because it seems like it's a little slower. Like the magic isn't like too crazy or anything. Like it's not like high stakes fantasy, I think, but it sounds really good and like a cute magical love story and a war between gods. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grasp that concept concept honestly but I don't think I'll mind if I don't grasp that I think that I'll still really enjoy this story even if like the whole fantasy thing doesn't make sense because when I read it like when I read like the synopsis it doesn't really make sense I don't think that that'll affect me too much and isn't the cover just the prettiest thing ever what does the inside look like I didn't even realize it looked like that. So pretty. We have a bunch of hardcovers right now. I feel like for some reason all my fantasies are hardcovers because I get them like fresh when they're when they're new. And then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I feel like these books that I'm talking about everybody talks about, but I read so slow that I can only keep up with the ones that are like really popular that everybody talks about. And then it's like I feel bad when I read something that's not well known or well talked about because I don't know if it's gonna be any good and I'm like like, well, I'm missing out on reading these books that I am pretty sure are gonna be good. That's my thinking process. So I need to read faster so I can get through the books that are really popular and also read books that I just find up on the bookshelves and am interested in, because that would be fun to me, I feel. I also have no idea what this is about. It follows Evangeline. She has to stop a wedding and she makes a deal with a charismatic prince of hearts. I have the two books that are out right now and I know that the Curse for True Love comes comes out soon. So I want to read this very soon. I hope it's only a trilogy too because I would hate to read them and then have to wait for another book. But yeah, I've heard really good things about this and this also sounds like right up my alley because it seems like whimsical and fantasy. I think this sounds like so fun and I'm excited to read it. So when I picked up Good Omens at Barnes & Noble like a few weeks ago, I also picked up One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick. This is the first The Shepherd King series. I think is what it's called and I know this kind of follows this girl who is trying to collect these playing cards because if she collects all of the playing cards in time then the smoke won't take over their village I think because I know there's like smoke right there I just love this cover by the way and like the pretty little gold detailing of it I think it's so pretty but I've also heard really good things about this book the only thing is the fact that there's a second one coming out and I think this one recently came out I really don't want to have to wait so long so this might be on my back burner a little bit as opposed to the books that are fully finished or coming out sooner but I am really excited about this because it just sounds like so fun but also like this is the perfect time to read it because it's a dark fantasy book. I think this would be a great read for this time of year. And the last physical book that I have with me right now is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I actually read this book. I have the second book I'm reading. I'm like half Way through it that'll be in a, a reading vlog coming soon this is the first one and it basically follows this girl her name is me literally forgetting her name and i'm reading it right now stevie her name's stevie and she goes to the ellingham academy and her goal is to solve this murder kidnapping situation <laughs> that happened years ago in the 30s because she's just obsessed with murder mysteries solving cases that's what she wants she wants to be a detective so she wants to take on solving this case and the truly devious person that was said to be the culprit of these crimes comes back up and there starts being letters again the tangled web of different mysteries that all kind of go together and people that are suspicious and you don't really know who to trust but it's a YA murder mystery type of book and it kind of reminds me of a good girl's guide to murder and the fact that it's a YA murder mystery and so the stuff in it isn't super like graphic Graphic. not very spooky but you know that it's still like a heavy topic I'm enjoying this not as much as I enjoyed a good girl's guide to murder for sure I rated this a three out of five stars when I read it and I'm on the second one so hopefully I'll end up enjoying it I'm just not sure if I'm the biggest fan of her writing so far I feel like she has a lot of unnecessary descriptions but I'm hoping that the second one will improve I've heard good things about it on Goodreads so I'm hoping that the plot twist will really keep me enthralled for the last one because I already own this series 
series so I want to make sure that I read it and get my money's worth okay so I wanted to talk about a few that I don't have with me currently so I'm just kind of thinking about it on the top of my head I know one book is butcher and blackbird I think it's called and this just sounds like so entertaining right up my alley because it follows two serial killers and they kind of have like a romance going on but they also help each other friends to lovers mixed with serial killers <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of the mind f series that I read a while ago and I really enjoyed that so that sounds really interesting to me it's on Kindle Unlimited so I think I'm gonna read that soon hopefully because I'm very excited to read that even though I have so many physical TBR books I want to read it the natural series I recently bought this series I think this could technically be read at any time like the same as you being able to watch like CSI or something like at any point because it's just that entertaining I feel like even though it's probably gonna give Swall Fuki vibes I can be able to read this at any time but I do have that series and I'm really excited to read it again it's YA murder mystery type of vibes I know it follows these group of kids who all have special talents and they come together at the FBI I think to solve murder cases a book that I've had on my TBR for a long time that I need y'all to help me <laughs> get through is the messy lives of book people I bought this book at Barnes and Noble a while ago because it was on a deal <laughs> and people were talking about it at that time but I didn't hear many good reviews about it and I think that in the premise doesn't really sound that intriguing to me but the cover is so cute because it has books on it and it's literally the messy lives of book people it's like I'm a book person I have actually no idea what it's about I think it, it's a kind of like a mystery it kind of reminds me of the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo in the way that somebody is like writing somebody else's life story or something and they're trying to figure out why they chose that person to do that I'm not sure that just seems of like a very fall book but I'm not sure if I want to read it right now or not and then there's Archer's Voice which I've heard is a fall type of vibe I have that book as well that I need to read encourage me to read these books please because I have so many books on my physical TBR that I need to get done and just like going around my brain like I want to buy this book I want to read this book on Kindle Unlimited so many books and I'm sure there's so many that I have not talked about but I figure <laughs> I'm clearly not going to read all of these books in the fall time I'm a slow reader but so I should stop now I should cut it off hopefully maybe this gave you some ideas if you haven't read some of these books of what's on my physical TBR that maybe you add to your fall TBR so I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I just love sitting down and being able to talk about books for a little bit it's just one of my favorite things so I hope y'all enjoyed if you did like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time bye Thank you.